We're now just a few days away from the first public release of Project Cars 3. I ordered the deluxe edition of the title recently and I wanted to explain why I've chosen to order a game that I'm pretty skeptical about and what I actually expect the PC3 experience to be like. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys, it's Mike for SimRacing604 and as mentioned in the intro, the release of the third installment of the Project Cars series is almost here. I decided to take the plunge and order up something that I honestly don't think is going to blow my mind as a racing sim. So why order it you might be asking? Well there's primarily three reasons why I wanted to order this title. First, I put hundreds of hours into each of the first two Project Cars titles. These titles have been fun for me and sort of on the cusp of greatness. The vehicle and track selection, graphics, VR, and a number of other things bumped PC2 higher on my personal rankings than a lot of other people's rankings, but again, it only really made it to the cusp of greatness because I think it was held back by a few things that could have been addressed but never were. But regardless, I had fun with the previous two titles, so hopefully number three will be a new kind of fun. And second, I asked very experienced and respected beta testers how the new PC3 drives, and without revealing too much, they were complimentary about many aspects of the driving experience, especially with a gamepad. Now, I'll be using a wheel of course, but the impression I get is that the driving experience has seen some all-around tweaks and should be improved from previous titles. And third, this is easily the hottest topic in sim racing right now, and many of you have asked if I'll be covering it, and the answer is yes. This video will be my final sort of preview video of PC3, but then uh, in the coming weeks and months I'll be getting more into the review side and exploring the career mode, so stick around and hit that subscribe button if you want to uh, see my take on PC3. Expectations in the community so far seem to be ranging from the very pessimistic sort of it's just a repackage of need for speed shift view to a very optimistic view of they're finally embracing their role as a game rather than a sim creator and bringing us only the fun aspects of driving but it's definitely got everyone talking so I will be adding more coverage in the future. For me, my expectations are quite low on this title ever being embraced by the sim community, but I do have high hopes for it on the game front. Do I think this game will ever rank with R-Factor 2 and AMS tier titles for sim purists? Not a chance, but this could be a title that finds its home a little outside of the sim realm, but well above the sort of fast and furious game realm. Maybe the points and upgrades system that we will see will add a much needed sense of accomplishment to the series and game progress definitely adds a dimension of fun to other titles like Forza and Gran Turismo. Now keep in mind I don't expect PC3 to rival either of those titles in scope or popularity but uh, I think it's kind of cool that they borrowed some of the elements that make those ones fun and combine it with a good driving experience. So that's led me to sort of an optimistic view of what this could be. Probably the biggest concern I have though is what will become of PC3 Beyond version 1.0. For those not aware, the reason CARS is capitalized in the name is because it's an acronym for Community Assisted Racing Simulator. The series was always meant to be sort of crowdsourced, but the community assistance has been in constant decline since the first title, and PC2 was notorious for not receiving updates for some of the most discussed bugs. In fact, the later updates didn't even have a proper change log on Steam. Slightly Mad Studios instead listed updates with items like various other bug fixes and improved the penalty system rather than getting into detail and seeing if what the community was asking for had been addressed. Granted, most users of the game won't read a detailed change log verbatim, but not showing what was changed in the game on the primary platform it's used on seems like the opposite of community interaction. And one final note, to, as a follow-up to a previous video I made, I asked the question previously of whether pit stops being deleted would be a deal breaker since most of us don't use pit stops anyway. There was a strong outcry from the community that yes, they are in fact a necessary part of any racing sim, but the first pit stop in a race trophy in R-Factor 2 has only been awarded to 18% of users. 
So yes, that's argu arguably the most hardcore sim on the market and only 18% of users, less than 1 in 5, have ever even completed one pit stop in a race. So I'll restate, as I did in my previous video, that maybe slightly mad is just trimming the fat to give a more streamlined experience based on what most users do most of the time. So that's it for my take, guys. I don't believe that Project Cars 3 will be a title that gets the respect of sim purists, but I do think there's fun to be had here based on the career progress and upgrades. The title seems to aim to borrow elements of other racing games and trim out some of what wasn't used much in previous titles, so my biggest hope is that Slightly Mad opens up the communication with the fan base and addresses bugs and missing features and community wishes beyond the release of the game. In the day and age of social media, there's really no longer an excuse to not be interacting with the fan base. But let me know what you guys think. What's your prediction of the title? Is it going to be a game? Sim? Useless? Fun? Good? Bad? How do you think this is all going to play out in the coming weeks and months? Let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.